continuing with our Big Bible adventure, doing the book of Jonah. Almost everybody knows this story. Certainly, if you went to Sunday school, you know the story. Why do we tell this for kids? Because there's nothing kids would rather hear about than someone getting eaten by a big fish. We're going to start our time together with our very special musical guest, Kevin Tarbot. We're so fortunate to have Kevin. Not a big fan. Right. The people of Nineveh are bad, unhappy people. 
the language or the depiction of God as the old white man with the white beard difficult, the only place it ever shows up in the whole Bible is the book of Daniel. God is an uh, image that way once. The rest of the time, God is imaged as a column of smoke or a column of fire or a burning bush or a sense of wind that sweeps through people and it helps them feel comforted. There's so many images for God in the Old Testament. And then God bless Michelangelo, he painted it on the top, from top of the Sistine Chapel, it's very beautiful, but everyone went, oh yeah, that's what God is, right? You get to choose. Don't let anyone, anyone choose your picture of the divine, of God, the name for it, or the picture. So anyway, other than that, we love Daniel, because Daniel brings us the idea that I rule my mind, my kingdom, which I alone must rule. Daniel is a beautiful story of a choosing his own thoughts. Not the thoughts given to him by the reigning king of the time. Not the thoughts given to him by everybody around him. Daniel chooses his own thoughts. He rules his own kingdom. Regardless of how worrisome that may be, he says, I know I have inner knowing, inner knowledge. I'm going to choose to let God be in my thoughts. Today, I would judge nothing that occurs. We know that our minds immediately judge. They're built for that. They immediately take in information. And then they tell us, this is valuable, and this is not. This is beautiful, and this is not. This is something I need to fight against. Oh, this is okay. But they have only taken in the smallest amount of information. When we open ourselves up to a spiritually aware path, one of the things we're doing is saying, I'm prepared to see more. I know that this world is something more than my five senses tell me. I know that this world is more than what I can touch or hear, what I see on the news, what other people insist on. I know that there are other worlds and other ways of being. And we embrace that as our spiritual journey. Your peace goes with me, and I am safe. It's so challenging. God, whatever happens, and I feel those defenses coming up. Somebody says something that I think makes me feel like I'm not respected, or I'm not of value, or I'm not understood. I feel that defense come up. I need to say there's no battle here. There is no battle here. God, your peace is still with me, and I'm safe with our work. Today, God is my only goal. The only thing I want today is God. Peace, compassion, love. Choose your name. That's the only thing I want. When I go into this store, and I'm going to try to return this item, which is not in its original packaging, and it's long overdue, and I don't have the receipt, instead of yelling at the customer service person, I'm going to remember that God is my only goal here. Peace is my only goal here. And as I keep saying, if our only goal is not peace, or love, or life, or connection, well then we really need to pause and think, what is it we're asking life for? My holy vision sees only what is pure. There's a place where I really invited you to come up with a different word for pure. What it's saying is, when I think, see with God's eyes, I'm asking to see the truth. I'm asking to see, instead of a lot of difficult people in my life who simply cause me problems, get in my way, don't understand me, don't see the wondrousness that I am all the time, my holy vision can come forward and show me that we are simply beings who are trying so hard to love and be loved. Yes, people have to take consequences for their actions, as do I. And yes, I probably want to distance myself from people who are causing too much drama in my life. But I want to be able to see the holy light in every one of us, which is exactly the same. And today we are going to say, today I hear only God. Today I hear only God. But I need to start in a different place than Jonah. I was going to throw out a hypothetical situation, completely not based on any kind of reality, like my place yesterday afternoon around 4 o'clock. 
You have been in the grocery store, and at some length, you have managed to pick out the exact kind of turkey that your spouse likes. They didn't ask for the turkey, but you know they've been super busy, they don't have everything on their mind, like what am I going to take for lunch tomorrow? You know that when lunch comes tomorrow, they're going to be super happy to have that turkey. You remember to get spiced, you remember to get shaved, you get the sort of right amount of turkey, right? You bring home the turkey. You are filled with love and light. You are offering this. It's not really a turkey. It's a testament to how you feel about your spouse. You feel so connected. Your spouse looks at the turkey, you're all rising right, and goes, oh, I'm just going to get pizza for lunch tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, at that point, I am judging. <laughs> Peace is not going with me. Something inside me is saying, you are not safe. You have just been disrespected, you have just been misunderstood, you have not been heard, you have not been seen. Why didn't they only say thank you? And that's, the one I, that's what I want to say, right? How do I know that I'm not doing any of those things and judge? Because the first thing that wants to come out of my mouth is not love, is not peace, is not any of those things I have said, I truly believe I want in my life. The first thing I want to come up is a battle cry, is a push away, is a wall coming up. Well, you can at least say thank you. And then what happens? What happens? I let that defense, that battle cry, that fear voice speak to me for that second. And what comes next? Instead of just sliding on with the rest of our afternoon, instead of perhaps saying to myself, well, that didn't work out quite the way I wanted, but I know that I loved, and I know my peace goes with me, and all I want here is God. Instead of doing any of those things, I probably say that thing. And my spouse probably puts up their barrier. And then it stops being two people in relationship speaking to each other, and becomes two egos that are afraid, and the fear boys just yapping at each other. And if we let it go on long enough, they will scream loud. And if we let it go on long enough, we will separate and part. Not forever, but long enough. And if we let it go on long enough, we will feel that hurt. Depending on who you are for an hour, a few days, depending on who you are, it'll come up again. Remember when I brought home the turkey? Depending on who you are. And why is that happened? It's happened because today, I hear only God is really, really hard to do. It's really hard to do. We're used to listening to another voice. We're used to not only listening to the voice of the ego, hitting back, telling us there's a battle where there is no battle, telling us we need to be defended when there is nothing to defend ourselves from. But we're also used to the ego telling us that that's the right thing to do. She shouldn't behave that way. He shouldn't have done that. This is the right thing to do. I need to come at them. I need to hit back. I think it's Deepak Chopra who says, before you start your spiritual path, you will react in one of two ways. Either fight or flight, right, like Jonah, <laughs> or I seek power over you. I'm going to tell him I'm right. I'm going to show that I'm stronger. But none of that, none of that is going to get us peace. And none of that is the way that we want to be ruling our minds, is it? None of that. But it happens. Because we are so used to hearing that voice. And that's okay. What? It's okay. Because if spiritual journey is anything, then it is spiritual practice, right? Spiritual practice. Say it with me. Spiritual practice. Right. So today our practice is, today I hear only God. Let's say it together. Today, I hear only God. I know that ego voice is going to come up. I know how hard it's going to be to see it. But today, I hear only God. Today, I'm going to listen to the words of love and peace and safety that God plants in my head. And it's not easy. And that's why the story of Jonah is so timeless. Jonah wants something so badly. What does Jonah want? To be a prophet of God, to change the world, to speak God's words to people. God offers Jonah.
Jonah what Jonah wants. Jonah says, no way! <laughs> He's scared. It seems too big. He's heard about these people of Nineveh. He's sure, his ego voice tells him, that he is going to be killed. No good is going to come of this. This is really bad, okay? You know, the ego going off. Same thing. The ego says, no, no, no. You can't let this happen. You've got to control the situation. This is not right. This is not fair. Jonah gets in the ship. Off he goes on the uh, water. The seas come up. It's rocky, and he ends up in the belly of a great fish. Now, how does that translate into the story I told about what really did not happen at my house at 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. <laughs> you know that feeling. You've allowed your ego to simply swallow you up. The rough seas to rock your peace. And why? Because Jonah, the prophet of God, the wondrous speaker of God, allowed that fear voice to choose for him. And we get it. I get it. I get it. They say that the first step on the spiritual journey and the first step to ruling your own kingdom is simply to see the voices that are there. Simply to see them. Of course, we would like to do better than that. We would all like to do better than that. But we are assured that as soon as you start to see those ego voice comes up, the fear voice come up, the voice that says, oh, you are not enough. You better attack. You're not enough. You better blame. You better choose your poison. But don't allow love in. And don't allow love out. As soon as we see that happening, that's when we can make a choice that's different. That's when we can ask our higher power, whatever you think that is, okay, I see what I'm doing. Help me. Help me, help me. God, here's, here's where the rubber hits the road. Here's the place where the stake enters my heart. Here's the place where I lose control of my stage coach. You pick your, your option, but please, God, this is where I need help. Because what I really want is peace. And what I really want to share with other people is love. And what I really want to see is a world that is infused with light of people who are simply doing their best. That's what I want. That's what I want, God. If we can see that happening, hear the fear voice, then we can start to hear the voice of God. Sometimes it takes a while because we're not used to listening, right? Not used to listening. I've often compared it to a small child. If the small child keeps telling, get telling that you can't, you can be seen and not heard, okay? <laughs> or you can't even be seen. If you keep ignoring the small child, the small child will stop talking. And it may take some encouragement for the child or the God voice to speak. It takes time. Jonah was a prophet. Jonah wanted to speak, but we want peace, and yet Jonah fell short. I was reminded last week by John Pete, thank you, John, about how difficult. <laughs> the spiritually aware life is and how often we do fall short. And when we fall short, having told me, okay, having told us to speak sharply to that person, right? The ego tells me, speak sharply, you're being attacked, you're being attacked, speak sharply. The ego will then tell me I'm a super bad person for having done that. You seen that one? <laughs> I'm like, oh, what? I'm like, what? Having done that, we don't want to be left feeling like, okay, now I'm a super bad person for having done that. And that's when it becomes really important to know that we're on a spiritual journey, and this is spiritual. Nice, thank you. I have said many times in this place that we recoil these days at the suggestion that we have sinned. But sin is a Greek word, it's an archery term, and it simply means to miss the mark. It doesn't mean you've been punished forever doesn't mean you're a bad person. doesn't mean that you failed and God is going to bring down God's retribution. This is not a God of love. That's people imagining God the way we are. I would bring down my retribution, so I'm sure God will too. Well, thank goodness that is not what this holy divine source of all love does. When we miss the mark, when we simply sin, miss the mark, what do we do in our church? What would you do? 
try again, and again, and again. And not expect yourself to be perfect, but hopefully every now and then see yourself getting a little closer to your goal, a little closer to your goal. That's why I find these stories of Jonah and the fact that they even exist in the Bible so meaningful. They're not pictures of perfect people who get it right. I'm a prophet of God. Look, I got it right. They're pictures of human people who want something desperately. In our case, peace, love, acceptance, to see the light in all others. In Jonah's case, to share peace. And God offers us those opportunities over and over and over and over and over. Opportunities to learn, to try, to see if we can come a little closer to the mark. And every time we take one of those opportunities as a gift of love, and not run away as Jonah did, but understand that we're being offered an opportunity to get closer to the mark of what we want, we can rule our own mind and say, this I don't judge it's that, I judge the way God does because it's bringing me, I know, closer to peace. You're going to feel the pain of your ego screaming if you manage to speak love into those moments to yourself, to someone else. It doesn't like it. It's used to being the voice that's being heard. But we are assured that as we try over and over and over to hit the mark, of living into love, of sharing love, of being love, we will, we will live more skillfully. And when we don't, we went up and lived less, very skillfully last time, I will make amends, <laughs> and I will try again the next time, because boy, there will be a next time. There was a next time for Jonah. If you read the rest, there was a next time, and he still fell short. We should find that encouraging, I think. You know, we started with the children's story, so I think I want to end with the children's story. It's a Japanese folk tale that I've always loved. There was, in the middle of a very big forest, a piece of wood, a stick, lying on the forest floor. And the stick was one day picked up by a master craftsman. And the stick was incensed. Hey, what are you doing? I was lying on the floor. I was decaying away. I was covered by moss. I was damp. And I was fine that way. Why are you picking me up and taking me away? The master craftsman carried the stick into the workhouse, which was warm, and there was a fire, and laid it gently down on the table. And the stick said, why am I on this table? Why am I warm? I was fine out in the forest where no one could see me. What am I doing here now? Well, you can see how it progresses. The master craftsman picked up his knife and began to take off the rough parts of the stick, peel back the places where the bark was gnarled, decayed, and the stick complained all the way along. This is not what I want. This should not be happening. Stop it right now. And the master craftsman hollowed out the parts inside which had simply molded away and made some holes in the stick. And the next day, the master craftsman carried the stick into a festive, uh, a festival happening in the town. The stick is whining and complaining all the way. The master craftsman lifted the stick to his lips, and the music of a flute filled the square. And people stopped to listen and were filled with a sense of peace that passed all understanding. And the stick said, yes, I knew I was meant for this. <laughs> <laughs> we want to be that flute, sending the music of God into the world, hearing only love and sharing only peace. And yet we fall short. We complain along the way. We're sure that the rough places and the storms and the being swallowed by the whale well, and the ego are, are, are not our, our, our problem. When God continually says, it's okay. Listen to me. Fix your eyes on peace and love. I'm going to use you to make beautiful music in this world. And maybe that's all we need to know. It's not a story for children alone, is it? 
It's a story for adults on an adult spiritual path. And for all of that hurt and the rot and the difficulty and the falling short over and over and the crazy stories from long ago that teach us that people were always struggling to make this their kingdom, we say thank you to God for reminding us that we are beings of great light and great love and that we have only one role, which is to share our music with the world. Thanks be God. The prayer today is, is not my own prayer. It was written seven years ago by Deacon Allen, a Catholic preacher and motivational speaker. It's appropriate for the season and as we move forward through this time of COVID. It, it just felt right for me to read this prayer today. Prayer for Autumn Days. God of the seasons, there is a time for everything. There is a time for dying and a time for rising. We need courage to enter into the transformation process. God of Autumn, the trees are letting go of their green. We too have our moments of change, insecurity, and risk. Help us to let go when we need to. God of fallen leaves, lying in colored patterns on the ground. Our lives have our, their own patterns. May we see the patterns of our own growth and learn from them. God of misty days and harvest moon nights, there are dimensions of mystery and wonder in our lives. We always need to recognize our power-filled presence. May we gain strength and vigor from mystery. God of harvest wagons and fields of ripened grain, many gifts of growth lie within a season of surrender. We anticipate the harvest in faith and hope. Grant us patience when we must wait for blessings. God of geese going south for another season, your wisdom enables us to know what to leave behind and what to carry into the future. We yearn for insight and vision. God of flowers touched with frost and windows wearing designs. May love keep our hearts from growing cold in an empty season. God of life, you believe in us, you enrich us, you entrust us with the freedom to risk the mystery of transformation. For this we are grateful. Amen. I want to say hi kindly to the people who are watching on video. You only get a small part of the service, but we're glad that you're with us too. I'm going to invite you to stand for the blessing and benediction. So may the love of God, the grace of our God, Jesus Christ, companionship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide upon us, everyone, now and forever. Amen. Go gently, go lightly.